What's up guys, I'm Nick, and this is Build Dad Build. And it's a one-way ticket to midnight. That's right, call it heavy metal. That's right guys, on this episode we're gonna be engraving on heavy metal. Ever since the D1 Pro came out, I've been trying to recreate the colors that X-Tool achieved, and I keep failing. So this started out okay, but the problem is this sheet is too thin, and if you look, it started to warp while I was engraving. So when it's, it started off okay, but then it just, like, all this is all muddled and stuff because it, at, once it warped, it took the laser out of focus. So I tried it on a piece of stainless that I thought was significantly thicker, but... So I get some of the results, or some of them, but then it just starts flexing and it takes the laser out of focus or the laser drags on the material and messes it up. But here on Build Dad Build, we're gluttons for punishment, so we're gonna try this one more time on this thicker piece of titanium to see if we can get some cool colors. First, I designed a test grid in Xtool Creative Space. Xtool Creative Space is still in its beta, but it seems to work better with the D1 Pro than Basic. I don't actually, honestly, I don't think you can work in Basic with the D1 Pro. Don't hold me to that. But XCS, or Xtool Creative Space, has a ton of more features, including an array feature, kind of similar to Lightburn, where you can make your own grids. Just gonna give you a quick shot of the grid, and the actual deal. We will get into the software in another episode. Focus. Sit our crosshairs. Frame it. Frame it again. And hit the blast off button. So I still can't reproduce the exact results that Xtool got, but I think they were doing it on stainless steel. They went with titanium instead, and we did get some cool colors. But so this is, so this is a this is a scale from from 10 to 100, and f speed from 10, I believe, to 180. And as you can see, like the majority of there's nothing on there. Everything kind of hung out in this little area right here. And that second run, I just focused on the colors that I was seeing. So as you can see, we're getting a good scale here. I don't know if you can see this. This is kind of a pink color. I wish I could get that a little darker. We've got a, kind of a couple of pinks right here, some oranges up here. Uh, these get a little bit more brown, um, a good range of blues in the middle, which is usually what titanium will anodize at. So we are getting a pretty decent result there. The blues really look, look pretty sharp. Pretty sharp, kiddos, pretty sharp. Okay, and to be fully transparent, I did switch over to light burn to do this because I took an image in and then I ungrouped it in order to give different areas different color. So here's what that looks like. You want to kind of see, get an idea of when it's filled in. It will look kind of like that. That's the overlapping layers. So that's how it's going to go. And to answer a question that people have been asking me, um, with XCS, you have to press this button to start. With Lightburn, you do not. You just hit start like you normally would. <sighs> okay. So after multiple tests in Lightburn where my results kept being inconsistent and I couldn't figure out why, I have discovered that it was human error. Go figure, right? <laughs> so what I didn't realize is in one of the latest updates to Lightburn, they changed their default speed from millimeters per minute to millimeters per second. It's taking my millimeters per minute from XCS, Xtool software, and I was multiplying it by 60. So I was making everything go really, really fast, and therefore I couldn't get the results that I was getting in XCS. After remedying that, um, we get a result that looks like this. So now we're really seeing all those different colors. 
Very nice, very nice. We like it. So now that we have that speed and power grid, we can actually do something cool with these results. Some of you guys may be asking why I'm doing this in Lightburn as opposed to in XCS, because I'm taking a tribal image of a dragon and I needed to ungroup it so I could make different parts of it different colors. And as far as I know, you can't do that in XCS. If you guys want to know how to ungroup something in Lightburn, let me know and I can make a video on it. But that's, that's why we do what we do, if you know what I'm saying. So just so you have an idea, this is kind of what the design looks like in Lightburn. And then we're just going to hit the go button here in a second. Go button, man. Go button. And now we frame. Everything looks good, so we're going to give it the beans. And while that laser is doing its thing, I just wanted to jump in here and say thanks for sticking around till this point in the video. I really appreciate it. If you are not a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button. I'm getting very close to 100K and I would really appreciate the help. Don't forget to hit that like button, smash it if that's your thing, and uh, comment down below what you want me to laser next. We've had quite a few changes over at the old Patreon, so I just wanna say thank you again to all of my patrons for making this whole thing happen, especially my top tier or Boilermaker patrons. Steven Mann, Eric Weiss, Derek Coach, Chuck Faulkner, Puffy Muffins, Andy the Viking, Todd Stewart, Paul Christensen, Jason Ayers, Reed Means, and these last three, I don't think I've shouted out before, maybe I have Cody. Cody, if I have, double shout out to you. But our newest Boilermakers are Cody, the Adirondack Wood Guy, and Tina. Clinks to the dinks. I also have a couple of lower tier patrons that just joined up. I would like to do a shout out to Rocket Rick and Lori Brown. Clinks to the dinks, the dinks to dinks. Come here, boy. Come on, come on. Come say hi. Oh, hi, oh, hi, Apollo. Who's a good boy? Can you look at the camera and say, I'm a good boy. I'm a good boy. Who's a good boy? Mwah. All right, daddy's gonna film. All right, and it is time for resluts. I mean, results. Okay, so I did have a little bit of an issue. So let's see, I don't know if you can see it so well on this one, but the problem I was having with the stainless steel is that the heat from the laser causes the metal to warp, even that thick. Like this guy right here, can you see that? Can you see how it just bows like this? So this was a mess up. And let's see, we can kind of see it up here where it's messed up, but it didn't finish because basically what it did is once this warped up like that, the laser head hit this and moved it and just was kind of doing its own thing. You know what I'm saying? I mean, look at that. So naturally, this would come in and just start hitting it and moving it. So they changed some of the settings to either not burn it as hot or as slow to try to try to mitigate that. Now we still got a little bit of warpage, just a little bit, but this one turned out better. Check that out. So I'll screenshot the settings for this up here someplace because um, it's a bunch of different settings. And then I just wanted to try something else. So I did the skull, which I think turned out pretty well. Check that out. So not everything came out perfect, but I do, I do really like how this kind of is just kind of smoky in there. Now I did do the teeth two different colors and if you'll see like one showed up really well and the other one didn't show up. So still need to do a little work there, but you can definitely see this good blue coming in here and some red and then these other guys love it. So finally getting really good results on stainless, I decided to do another grid on titanium. And look at these blues, man. These blues are crazy. The first run with the blues, it's like that. Can you see it? Try not to be in the shot here. Is that in focus? There we go. First shot with the blues, and then I tweaked it a little bit, and we came up with this. So that by far is my favorite one. Look at that. That looks so good. <laughs> oh, I want to make out with it. <laughs> but that is only my opinion. You tell me your favorite down in the comments down below. Right, guys, so that's it for this installment of Build Dad Build. Now, thanks for playing. Now I got to get to work. Woo!
What's up guys, I'm Nick and this is Build Dad Build, a place where, shit, what'd I just say? I do not know what I'm talking about. Let's start over, please. I didn't put it in there, did I? Mother Efker, as Amazon Music would say.